today we're going to be talking about this uh, electromechanical systems, electromechanical systems, and a couple of other new things that that you still don't don't know. We haven't had an opportunity to discuss something called the transfer function. So uh, this is going to be something new for you. But there is a link in here, as usually from the study guides, you could you could get to it. Like in this case, for example, an electromechanical system is like when you have a motor here, and you have a you have a load on the side, and the components are all acting as a system. So you're gonna you're gonna study systems like this. I'm just giving you all just like a little preview where you will have a bone graph model that will have the mechanical side and then you will have, um, I'm sorry, the electrical side over here and then the mechanical side on the other side. But these are the kind of things that the, this new study guide will offer you is to talk about this. I also have a couple of, uh, I mean to consider the two mechatronic systems because now we have a uh, mixed energy domain things. So in here you have the um, uh, the other two titles with these are for uh, modeling problems like derivative causality and algebraic loops and in here is the new concept the so-called concept transfer functions and state space models and that's what we're going to be uh, talking today. I also want to talk to you a little bit about this lab itself and uh, show you how that uh, relates to this uh, topic of the state space form and the transfer function. So for next Tuesday, this is the homework set in chapter 5. And then by the end of next week, I would like to have this lab done. So let me explain you a little bit more about this lab. Here's the, the situation. We have a housing in here that contains an oscillator inside this housing. This oscillator compresses a piezoelectric material in here. Piezoelectric material produces a voltage and this voltage is seen by this uh, electrical circuit in here that allows us to amplify the signal. Now, let's just um, work it out a little better um, in here so that we we can write some things on it, okay? So, in here what you have this is this is a housing that is like one piece thing so if i can highlight this Professor? yeah would that be the best representative you would say by like something like a <coughs> like a like a key on a keyboard or like some sort of uh, Uh, well, in the case of the, um, I think you might be correct in, it's similar to that, but I'm not sure whether they use uh, piezoelectric ones on the keyboards, but the principle will still be the same because you press on something and there's some electronic device under the key that transmits a signal to the computer and say, oh, he pressed an A, things like that. But in this case, it's more like, like if you are going to measure the acceleration of something. So here's the piece, or you could say the ground in here. Uh, let's just make some notes in here. This would put we could put here's ground, and this is the input here. No, just like an accelerometer you're going to measure the acceleration of something. And so this is the input in here. 
Now, how does it work? Do you see this housing in here? If I move this up, what's gonna ha what is this mass uh, gonna try to do? Let's say if I move this all of a sudden, click, give it an input in here very fast. The mass is going to try to stay where it is, right? And the housing is gonna move up, but this is just like an oscillator. This is just like a system like this. If you were to draw it like this, it's, it's like hanging from the wall, like this, hanging from the ceiling, I should say. If you move the ceiling up, isn't it true the, the spring will extend? Mm -hmm. But because it, it has this material right here, this is going to be the piezoelectric material. This piezoelectric is this one. This material is the piezoelectric material. So when you compress the piezoelectric, what happens here? You produce a voltage here. you produce a voltage here. But this thing is, you may say, weak signal. So we need um, a circuit in here, like you see on the, on the right hand side, to be able to amplify the signal. So this is called an operational amplifier. But you see, uh, from very s weak signal, you can have a passive element in here that all of the sudden magically somehow gives us in here the output voltage on this side, which which already already is big, you know, it, and you can actually measure it in here without having some sort of a power source. So this this is operational amplifier has its own power. I, I, I have asked students when I present this example whether they understand the operational amplifier and nobody knows. So I, I, I no, we're starting from scratch. So don't get too worried that I don't expect you to know exactly how this device works until maybe a couple of lectures from now. So in here you have the circuit in here. What it does is the circuit allows us to get this output in such a way that we can see. Now, one thing that it is important to consider in here, and that is I could make a test in, the, in this uh, input in here. I could I I could enter in such a way that the input would be a sinusoidal input like this. Yeah, this is my my input here. It it has the input signal has an amplitude <coughs> and it has a frequency. But on this side, isn't it true that I think you will agree that 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 the output is also going to be uh, uh, sinusoidal, but maybe it might be off, you know, by a bit, might be not necessarily in phase. But so this is the output signal. Okay. Now, it's very obvious that um, we're interested giving a certain input what happens to the output, right? So why don't we write this down? I will say we are interested you could say in a, in a relation between the output 
the input and the output. Okay. And that relation, I could write it down like this. I could say, um, let's change the colors as this thing. That relation in here, you could say, let's just put relation equals to, and here we put output, and then here input. This relation that we're interested to know, this thing is called a transfer function. So always the transfer function is the relationship between the input and the output. So in here you could say, uh, Something you could write that the um, yeah you could say transfer function yeah the transfer function is in this case the the output divided by the input from here you could derive that the output is equal to the transfer function times the input. This is a very significant development because what are we saying now? We are saying that we can find out the output that we're interested in as long as we know the transfer function and the input. So my lecture today is going to be more concentrated into finding this relationship for you because that's what we need. So let's go back to the what I was talking about the lab in here. So given in here the input here and the output over here, we want to know that relationship. And here what I have done is, this is the circuit part of the of, of this, and here's the bond graph model of this. So I, I think by now you should be able to recognize how we obtain this bond graph model given the system, right? The only thing that is new here is really that is this operational amplifier. It's like a control source and that is uh, something that uh, uh, that is new so but the, that's how you represent this operational amplifier on this uh, write-up you I made uh, some derivation of the equations using the block diagram approach and using a particular requirement here that in order to amplify this voltage here that we're interested on, the input has to be zero, the input current, so that this is this device act as a as a control source or as a modified transformer. I am a little reluctant to call it a transformer because of what I just said, the input current should be zero. And remember that the it transformer is a power conserving element. If you have one of the signals zero, you can't conserve energy. 